All right, and we're live. Welcome to the 114th installment of the Unplugged Alpha podcast series. We're back talking red flags tonight. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. The whole thing is being built on the book, the Unplugged Alpha. Second edition is out, is available in hardback. Audible will be out very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that. Um, all right, let's get right into this. Um, I've already posted the join link for the Q&A segment, and um, looks like we've already got somebody waiting in the green room. So um, come in now if you want, but I'll I'll get to the call-ins after the uh, ad reel sort of midway through in about 40-odd minutes or so. But uh, yeah, the link's there. That's how the show goes. A lot of people DM me and ask me, how do I you know, talk to you about this sort of stuff? It's always the same. Always Monday nights, always 8 p.m. Eastern Standard, always taking call-ins. Well, not always, I mean 99% of the time. But um, yeah, the link's there, pinned in the live chat of YouTube. So you got to watch show live to get the call-in segment. And it's totally free. Um, since we are chopping up the red flags, let's do this. Um, where's my banner? Banner? What the hell's going on? Here we go. Uh there it is, red flag chapter, and boom, there we go. So you'll be able to get um, the chapter out of my book for free if you opt into my email list just below. Go to the website, entrepreneursandcars.com forward slash red dash flags, and you can down download for free. I think what we're going to do here is I went on social media and I sort of uh, you know surveyed my audience and asked them about red flags in dating. Um, I kind of did it two ways. So on Twitter, I said, what was the worst red flag you've seen when, when first dating a woman? And I separated it. And I also asked, uh, ladies as well to see what they would say. Um, so we'll kind of do it from both perspectives. And, uh, I almost got a bunch of replies off the YouTube community tab. So we'll just, we'll just hop straight into this. Yeah. All right, here we go. And where are we? Okay. Can you guys see that okay? Is that big enough? Maybe that's a little bit better. Anyway, how's my audio tonight, by the way? I had some audio issues over the last couple of weeks. Am I coming in clean and clear without uh, fading in and out like I was the last time? So hopefully, we're all good in the hood. Um, what do we got here? So, tells a story about almost having sex with some guy. I responded, that sounds like sex, not almost. Well, he was wearing a condom, so I don't count that. True story. I ghosted. Imagine saying that early on uh, when first dating, like in the first first few dates. So that would fall into uh, red flag number 11, big notch counts for sure. Yeah. I mean, look, you want you want a friends, friends with benefits. You want uh, something short term. You want something late and easy, nothing serious. Keep them at arm's length. I mean, look, other dudes haven't have indulged if you want to. Whatever, ha you know. Have at her. It's not like it's not like it's going to make a difference if it's you know, thirty one or thirty two. Uh, Kirby here says she hated her own country to the point of being self xenophobic. It was bizarre. I was done by the end of the date. At the end of the date, we were outside mine. I went inside and took off my clothes and started. What? At the end of the date, we were outside my place. I went inside, took off my clothes, and started playing Pokemon. She stood there surprised, and I said bye. So she left. My revenge or me being petty, I guess. That's kind of petty. Um, sounds a little dorky. I would not take it there, but she's hating her own people and country. That's a little bit weird, man. Like, uh, like that's like the whole self-deprecating. It's like when guys sort of like, you know, self, self-deprecate and they sort of insult themselves. Danny here says, um, asking for presents and you to pay for everything immediately. That's just brat behavior. Um, look. If she's young, innocent, pure, virgin, you know, you're looking for wife stock, uh, you know, you're going down these sort of conversations and routes, then maybe that has some value. But, um, you know, for the average Western woman today, it's like pff, pound sand, you know. Yeah. Women are only worth your time and investment and financial resources when they prove that they're worth something. And they're not going to prove that they're worth something until you deal with them over several weeks, several months, right? So you can see what they're made of. So you can get a feeling for them, right? So early on, first date, second date, you, you know, you need to pay for everything. I need gifts and presents. Bye. Ray here says, uh, the communication was inconsistent and the interest shown was fluctuating. Uh, they would express, I'm, I'm assuming he means she would express. Guys, 
be precise in your language. The four agreements, be impeccable with your word, okay? I'm going to keep harping on this because it keeps happening. People using words like partner instead of boyfriend or girlfriend or, you know, they would express or I want to date somebody. No, if you're a man and you're straight, you're dating a chick. They, there's no pronouns, there's no they, them or any of that shit. Use correct language. She would express a desire to become closer only and then push away. She would then vanish, taking an inordinate amount of time to respond before reappearing, sorry, before re reappearing with a peculiar excuse for the absence. She's a hoe. She's she, like, look, women are never really single, okay? Like they're always talking to some guy. They're always involved with some guy. Even on dating apps, if they're like, hey, I'm single, I'm looking for something serious. I guarantee, I mean, she's she, she's dating other guys. Like she's talking to other guys. She may have been on several dates with other guys. She might have been with another guy and spent the night at his place the other night and woke up in the morning and went home and is now talking to you. It, it, it's not that uncommon, right? So if her interests and she's distant and she's not communicating with you. If you message, there's hours that go by before she responds. If a woman has genuine burning desire for you, she will respond immediately. There's no, oh, you know, I was busy for the last, you know, 36 hours because my cat sprained its eye looking at a disco ball and I had to go to the veterinarian and pay all this money to fix it. And it was very devastating. Shut the fuck. No, forget about it. No, no, no. Adam here says, daddy issues, drinking, argumentative. Oh man, it's your entire list and then some. Yeah, so again, if you guys don't have the entire list, go to the uh, email list, opt in and get it all. Uh, the daddy issues is effing massive though. It's an immediate gotta go. <laughs> Look, I'm I'm gonna co-sign this very, very strongly. You know, it it's, I put it number one on my list. Daddy issues is number one on my list for red flags. Uh, I dated a gal for, several years that uh, had a incredibly poor opinion and relationship with her father. It went from an incredibly good relationship with her father, the way that she described it, to incredibly poor, uh, citing indiscretions and abuse and all these other stories. And it's like, it just didn't add up. It just did not add up that, you know, she went from daddy's little girl with a good relationship, they had fun, they respected each other, to he doesn't even exist, right? Um, if a chick doesn't have a good relationship with her old man and he's around and you know, he's a good man and he's good at being a man. Um, the problem isn't probably with him, you know, for being honest on a bounce of probabilities more often than not, it's going to be her. So look, ignore it. If you want, invite her into your life, date her, marry her. If you want, I don't care. You know, uh, <laughs> I'm not the penis police do whatever the hell you want with your life. But I'm telling you women with daddy issues are a freaking nightmare. If they don't respect their father, they're not going to have a high opinion of men. You're a dude. She's not going to have a high opinion of you. She's going to dismiss you. She's going to utilize you. You're just an accessory, you know, situations like that. Uh, it's also closely, very, very highly correlated um, with borderline personality disorder. Um, I don't know what the exact numbers are today. The last time I saw a stat, it was something like one in five or one in four women uh, are either diagnosed or undiagnosed with the condition. And they're they're hot they're cold they're warm they're loving they're you know they're frigid they'll uh, whatever it's look find out for yourself i know a lot of guys are going to be like yeah okay rich that's fine i'm just going to figure it out for myself when you see it you'll see it and you'll come back to this and be like he was right go on amazon and write a review and say you know rich was right about this sort of stuff uh daddy issues uh oh, here's one uh, carter said chick had a calendar with get ass eaten written on it for Saturday. <laughs> She's a hoe. Big notch count. Number 11. Red flag number 11. I mean, have fun. Again, indulge. 50 other guys probably have. Make sure you wrap it up. Protect yourself, all that sort of stuff. But uh, do not make her a girlfriend. Do not invite her into your life as a wife, as a mother of your kids. Uh, she a hoe. That's it. Um, she drank more than I did, and I wasn't holding back. Alcoholic women. Um Red flag number 20, addictions, right? A lot of these are already on my list, right? Uh, Jonathan, like, look, guys, if you deal with a chick and she's addicted to drugs and alcohol or shopping or shopping and returning things, um, TV shows like uh, Bachelor, Bachelorette, drama, stuff like that, uh, that's all that's going on in her world. Like she's got addictions to unhealthy uh, cigarettes, you know, um, you're, you're going to have problems with her. You know, she, she can't regulate her behavior. She can't wreck. She, 
she doesn't have the ability to say no to things, right? It's the whole um, marshmallow test that I've talked about before, you know, where you delay gratification. You want to deal with a woman that has the ability to say to no, say no to things and preserve, um, you know, her relationship with certain vices. You know, for example, look, everybody likes sugar. I like sugar. I, I like donuts. I'm on the worst fucking diet right now for the next, I have five more days. I'm on this crazy diet. I'll explain it in a totally separate video. All I'm, all I'm basically eating is turkey, sorry, ground turkey, uh, fucking um, cauliflower rice, uh, butternut squash and apple uh, soup. That's it, right? Uh, it's working, and I'll explain why it's working shortly, but it's, it's, it's brutal. But you drive by the donut shop, and you're like, oh, I could really do with a freaking, you know, honey cruller, uh, Boston cream sort of thing, right? Like you, like you have the draw to these vices, and you have to have the ability to say no, and 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 basically tell these things to fuck off in your life, right? Um, if a woman can't do that, she's probably shared her body with a lot of dudes. She's probably got some addictions to certain things, and it doesn't matter if it's alcohol or if it's shopping and shopping and returning things. It doesn't matter what it happens to be. You don't want to deal with that on a long-term basis. You can. It's not that you can't. It's just that your life will become more uncomfortable, more difficult, more combative. Uh, it's going to annoy you. Okay. Trust me when I say this. I'm I am not a spring chicken. I've done all of these things, and I'm speaking from wisdom. Wisdom comes from making stupid mistakes. This is why you know we have these conversations. Jonathan here says, calling me crying when her male best friend stood her up for getting food was 17 at the time, and this was about two weeks into dating. I did promptly tell her that, that was odd and inappropriate to have the reaction. Call me about it. Not enough, though. Needless to say, uh, I should have ended things in there. Young to be. Call me crying when her male best friend stood her up for getting food. That's that's a bizarre conversation. Well, I mean, he's a young kid, 17. <laughs> Teenagers are idiots, man. You know, like, <sighs> I go back and I think about some of the dumb shit I did in my 20s, even you know, like even in my teen years, they have these conversations. Anyway, dirt under her nails. Yeah, that's gross. Why would a woman have dirt? Like you're a female, man. Like you're, you're a beauty object. Take care. I don't even have dirt under my nails and I'm always working with my freaking hands, man. So I'm not taking her care. Yeah. I mean, if she's got dirt in her nails, can you imagine how dirty she is in other places of her body? Um, don't answer the phone for five minutes. Return home to her setting the cats on fire. Worst part, that's a joke, obviously. Uh, I was in prison when she fell in love. I mean, the thing with some of these is you're going to get wallies on um, Twitter that you want to be comics. <clears throat> uh, now, I offered the opportunity for women to chime in in another tweet, and of course, women chime in for the one for men. I'm here. Pay attention to me. I have something to say. Uh, her phone lock screen, this is a good one. Her phone lock screen was a picture of herself solo in a bikini. Uh, it's basically a narcissist. I mean, my phone lock screen is a picture of me and my kid when she was little. So, you know, take that for what it is. Um, about a month into dating, we had drinks and I made some offhand remark about having many, having many years before us to live. She, inter she interrupted me to tell me she wouldn't live that long and knew that she was going to die. She then spent 30 minutes explaining to me how terrible of a mother she had been to her first son who was presently nine and would eventually become a teenager, get drunk and kill her in a fit of rage, a point she wouldn't ease. This is one of these chicks that's like into these like tarot card readings probably or, for, or fortune tellers or horoscopes and shit like that. Idiots. Idiots. Uh, that she got to the restaurant before I, who opened the door, who pulled her chair, who took her coat off, and lastly, why didn't I pick her up to begin with so I could have been the one, the only one. My love costs nothing for a rice stand. This is just another romantic dork. Um, Scott, inability to stay off her cell phone. Yeah, that's a major red flag. This is, I mean, like this ties into the need for attention and validation from others, um, you know, on social media. I have that as, as one of my red flags. It's, um, blah, 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 blah. and from her past, could tie into that as well. Um, seeking validation number 13. Um, if you're, if you've invited a chick out to spend time with you, date, drinks, coffee, 
bite to eat, or d'oeuvres, doesn't matter what the hell it is. If you've invited a woman to share your company with you, she should be giving you her undivided attention. I would give her one warning. I would say, look, that's disrespectful. I've taken time out of my day to take you out. Would you mind putting your phone down? If she continues or she barks back or she gives you a hard time with that, pay the bill, throw in your cash, just get up and walk out. Just turn around 180 degrees and walk in that direction and don't look back. You don't need to deal with that shit. Uh, the right perspective. Well, I wasn't dating her, but a chick invited me home from a bar once. There were empty condom wrappers on the floor. She was pretty unhappy when I called a cab and left. <laughs> oh, man. High notch count right there, right? Prescription pills. Yeah, look, don't ask women to send you pictures of their, um, uh, you know, their body, the nudes. Hey, you know, you have naughty pictures. You want to you wanna see what a chick's all about? Ask her for a picture of her medicine cabinet. Try that next time. Um, look, there's a vast spread when it comes to antidepressants between men and women. There's loads and loads of data on this. You can go search it up. Um, as women get older, the amount of women on prescription antidepressants, SSRIs, all this sort of stuff is exponentially higher than men. Um, we're talking four or five times higher. Um, have a look in her medicine cabinet. See what she's on, honestly. Um, she's probably doing the same thing when she's over at your place, looking at your pill bottles and stuff like that, or your supplements. So ain't nothing wrong with that when you're, you know, when you're vetting a chick, especially on a long-term basis, if you want a girlfriend or if you want to, you know, have a family, uh, look, the, the, these, um, chicks that are addicted to following the advice of the mainstream media marketer, they're the same ones that stood on the dots, wore the face diapers, got 18 jabs. You know, they're the exact same ones, you know, oh, I'm depressed. Oh, well, I can give you this, uh, whatever. It's going to make you feel better. It just dulls them. One of the problems with things like antidepressants and SSRIs is it, is it totally tanks your sex drive. One, two, it like, it basically turns them into worms. They don't have highs. They don't have lows. They're just like, eh, they don't care about shit. They also put on weight too. That's one of the other downsides. Um, anyway, said enough about that. Uh, Michael here says she started crying because I didn't hold her hand. Later on, I found out she was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. She did have a very nice body, however. I did not, I did have my way with her, but I was definitely locking my doors at night after it ended. Yeah. <laughs> Crying because I didn't, you know, early on, uh, again, the question that I ask is when first dating, early on, okay, first, first few dates. We're, we're talking probably the first three or so under that. Um, uh, chick should not be crying about not holding your hand. I mean, whatever, like I said, you know, I get flack. Oh, why do you tell guys to indulge? These chicks have already done it anyway. Okay. It's not like you're, you're, you know, going from zero to one. You're literally going from like 50 to 51. Okay. Uh, true story. Her icebreaker conversation on date one was that she isn't legally allowed to own a gun because she got charged in an incident where she pointed a gun at her ex in a fit of rage. Yeah, for those of you who don't know that aren't firearm owners or haven't taken the safety courses, you never ever point a gun at anything that you don't in intend to shoot. Uh, it's, just, it's just one of the rules. Her words, in the moment, I wanted to shoot his nuts off. Yeah, well, there you go. Um, <laughs> maybe, that's an, maybe that's a first date question. Hey, you ever been charged with anything? Um, this one here, Trampa says in, in quotations, rich guys cheating is inevitable. And then she expected me not to and didn't know how much money I made either. Okay, weird, but sure. Um, septum piercing. Yeah, I talk about that in the book. Uh, uh, tattoos and piercings are a big red flag. Like ear piercing, fine. Uh, you know, ears, double, fine whatever, maybe like a nose, um, you know, ring when you start moving to septum, which is like the bull ring that goes in the center of the nose, not something like this or like a little diamond or something like that. Um, and then you move to like nipple piercings or like the entire row of like freaking piercings all the way up. I saw a gal the other day, of course, you know, guess where it was barista at a coffee shop, like a Starbucks. 
freaking piercing here, piercing here, like any ridge that you could get through on the ear, like on the inner ear was pierced. It just like, it looks retarded. It's, it's mutilation. It's bodily mutilation. You know, the chicks that, that, that get that freaking thing here, the big giant, like uh washer, you know, where it's got like a big fucking hole in your ears, like and goes like that. And they take it out and your ear hangs down. Like it's fucking like this. Imagine taking her home to the family, you know, Christmas. Hey everybody, here's Becky with the fucking things all up and down her ear and the big black washer in her ear like this, you know. Um, openly asked if my work insurance would cover kids that aren't mine. <laughs> Single mom. <laughs> she never told me she had a kid until then at dinner. I got up and left. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, I mean, guys, there's an entire chapter in this book telling you why uh, you're going to run into all kinds of problems dealing with single mothers. Uh, they're not all going to give you problems, but on a bounce, probably the vast majority of them well. And in the book, I talk about a scenario when it may make sense to date a chick with kids. Uh, this guy here says, guy friends. Again, I cover that in my red flag chapter, uh, keeping men from her past around. That's number five. Oh, gross. Pridefully showing off her armpit hair at the bar we went to. Ugh leave she told me she wants to be a boss babe leave leave boss babes are just they're so annoying man uh, like you can watch some of the ladies night shows now and you you'll spot the boss babes within the first five minutes they just talk over you they're annoying they just they won't shut up they keep cutting you off uh, like uh, which one is it here on my list? It's uh, women that try to compete with you. I could have put, uh, you know, calling it boss babes, but that was uh, do, 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 number four. In fact, I mentioned in it, boss, hashtag boss babes. You know, you can look for that as a telltale sign. Uh, but these are women that try to compete with you, right? They talk over you. They want to argue with you about everything. They make up shit to just argue about. They're annoying. I don't, I don't care how hot they are it doesn't matter it, it doesn't matter because the bang only lasts for so long and then you're dealing with her after that guys it doesn't matter mountains crumble to the sea fireworks shoot out her ass when you have so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter i don't care how good it is when that's up and you're not doing that it's gonna be it's gonna be a head case but don't listen to me go ahead do it you know have fun deal with the crazy if you want um, talking about wanted children on the first date as a 35 year old, you know, when I got divorced and I got back in the dating scene, I was in my late thirties, 38, 39, I think. And there was a lot of that. There's a lot of chicks like at the end of their reproductive cycles, like basically like, ch like chicks know chicks start to feel it by the time they're in their twenties and then they start to get to 30 and they're like, you know, I'm running out of eggs All my girlfriends have kids when they get to 40. They get, or get or getting close to 40, they get really desperate. Like there's even chicks after 40. I was reading a study earlier today on women that freeze their eggs. Um, <laughs> guys, frozen is never better than fresh, okay? It doesn't matter what culture, society, mainstream media, feminism tells people, frozen is never better than fresh. Fresh is always the best. Go to the grocery store, get a fresh strawberry versus a frozen one. Fresh is always better, Okay. These people that think that they can freeze the reproductive embryos and thaw them out years later, hopefully, you know, it's it's going to work for them and it sticks and you don't have issues. They're insane. The success rate on that is exceptionally low, very, very low. I think it was less than 20 percent, especially if you're over 40. And it and it goes and they're, they were even talking about cases of women in their mid to late 40s that are doing it. It's just insane. Not good for her, not good for the children, nothing. There's no good that comes from that. But hey, go climb the corporate ladder, get your degrees. You know, that's what, the, you know, they keep telling chicks, right? So that's why they keep freezing eggs and doing this dumb stuff. But yeah, baby rabies, that's that's also my list. You know, I talk about women that have um, a very strong, that's number 16 on the list, that have a very, very strong desire to have children. And this guy had it on a first date. I had chicks with their opener when they would message you. They'd be like, hey, you know, just so I don't waste my time or your time, you need to know that uh, I'm very serious about having a family and children. So if that's not what you want to do, then let's not get together and, you know, have that date. It's like, all right, 
See you, bye. Uh, three broken engagements. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's a um, that's not a good sign. That is a um, that is a problem. The common denominator is her. Uh, it's definitely not three guys in a row. And if it is, the common denominator, the common denominator is she doesn't know how to choose men. You know, is the other problem with that too. You know, I've said this many times. If fathers would just take care of choosing women's husbands and set boundaries, and women follow them, just about all the problems in the world generally go away when it comes to the sexual marketplace. But you know what happens? Women disobey their fathers. They act out against them. Uh, you know, if they set healthy boundaries and say, look, I only want this, this, and this, and this is what's good for you and the family and, you know, what I want for us sort of thing, she'll, a lot of women will intentionally go out and do the things that he tells her not to do because they want to throw a hissy fit and rebel, which, by the way, is also on my list as well. It's another red flag. Not having a relationship with mother and father, weird, right? Sadly saw some of mine too late, dirty house. She's a feminist. Again, you know, that's that's on my list. It's number two on the list. I break it down in detail in there. Uh, weed and alcohol are the biggest red flags you can spot. Abusive use of it, definitely. Uh, depression, acting de uh, despondent. She's anti-white. <laughs> I don't know, that's fucking race shit. Uh, she will drive to the date because she had, she didn't drive to the date because she had her third DUI. That was the only date we had. <laughs> Imagine you meet a chick and she says, I can't drive to the date. Call me an Uber. I need to take an Uber. Pick me up because I've had three DUI. I wouldn't even deal. I fucking, if she even said that before, I'd be like, done. I got, I got better options. I got other things to do. Gives me like, you know, when I read this shit, it's like it gives me a headache and I feel bad for you guys because it's like, stop making bad choices, man. It's good that this thread's here because there's a lot of use in it. Um, oh, my God. I once read an article a few years ago how a man fell in love with a woman and vice versa, but she was already three months pregnant with another man's baby, but they still went ahead and got married. I mean, that should be obvious. There, there's there's women that are on dating apps now and I like stop sending to me <laughs> I've seen so many of them not even in the triple digits not even quadruple digits probably five digits now like we're talking tens of thousands of screenshots over the years that I've been doing this people have been sending me pictures of pregnant women on dating apps like screen captures I've shared a lot of them on social media a lot of them I just delete now but um, there's a lot of women carrying the seed of another man in her womb. She has shared her body with all these other men, and now she's carrying the seed of another man in her womb, and she wants you to take care of that shit. Fuck that. That is the worst deal you could ever make as a guy. Dumb. Do not be a cuck. Department of Corrections ankle bracelet. Yeah, well, I bet she's crazy in bed. Uh, I ordered two light appetizers. She said the food was beneath her. She wasn't going to end up beneath me. That's for sure. Exited in 30 minutes. Imagine you go to a restaurant, you sit down and you order something that you want to eat. You've invited a woman out for a date. You're probably paying for it. She's sitting up opposing you and saying that the food is beneath her. Get fucked. See, th this is the way that you think, guys, when you live a life of an abundance, when you've when you've done something with yourself, when you have put a dent in the universe, when you have options, when you have money. You can you can look at things like this. You can look at horrible women and just say, I'm good. I'll pass. Right? Get there. Uh, caught her looking through my phone after getting out of the shower. Uh I'm assuming that's like date three or four or five or something like that. But yeah, that's definitely like, what the fuck? Husband, what does that mean? Vegan, yeah. I mean, if you're not at like, look, if you've got dietary, I don't care. I'm not going to judge you. You, know, you want to be vegan, you want to eat fucking plants, ha have at it. I've dated a vegan before. It's a fucking nightmare. You know, she's over, you have a good night, da 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 breakfast in the morning you're cooking up some eggs and bacon and she's like well I, I can't eat that can't have eggs can't have bacon 
no sausage, hash brown. Oh, hash brown, you know, she can have because that's vegetable. So you got to make her like something, some bullshit like fava beans or something like that. It's just not, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. I mean, I can talk about the veganism stuff another time. It's just not going to work. Very independent and I don't need a relationship, she says. When I hear that, I, that I've decided to ask for the bill immediately and very nicely say, thanks, it's not a good fit. Yeah, look, you know, he's like, this is boss babe energy, right? She, you know, again, it's on my list. You know, she wants to compete with you. Hashtag boss babe, hashtag boss girl or whatever, you know, happens to be that they use in their social media. But if you have a chick that's like, I'm all very independent and I don't need a relationship, there's guys out there that that works for. The sorts of conversations that I have and the types of relationships that I advocate for are completely different than that for many, many reasons. But again, it's to the point of putting yourself first. You're going out there, you're like you're the unplugged alpha, right? Like you're putting you're putting your little dent in the universe. You're doing something of some significance. The last thing you need is a chick that wants you to cheerlead for her. There are women out there. I've had them on the ladies' night show. They've called in and they've done this, you know, uh, song and dance about how they don't want to cheerlead for a man. They want a man to cheerlead for her. And guess what it's for? It's not for a Fortune 500 company. It's not for, you know, she's solving cold fusion or, uh, you know, finding ways to manufacture synthetic fuel for $1.50 a gallon. She's not doing anything of any significance. It's usually some bullshit like, oh, well, I really want to, you know, create this like uh, dog poop cleaning business and I want you to cheerlead for me sort of thing. It's like there's guys out there that'll do it and they're dorks. And these people, they really don't like each other in the long term. She's not a compliment to his life. He's just some raw, raw cheerleader for her. And she ends up banging some other guy and breaking his heart. And he go and he comes and finds my material later on. That's what ends up happening. Don't deal with the I'm fiercely independent and I don't need no man. That's a feminist. Number two in the red flag list. She showed up on the date, ordered two beers and three shots and expected me to pay for them. I didn't. Two beers and three shots. Wow, that's quite the order for a first sit down. Uh, told, took no interest in me. Came, came to find out that she was in that final stage of breaking up with a dude that was totally ignoring her. So I changed. Yeah, look, if you're dealing with a chick on the rebound, uh, you know she's got eyes for somebody else and she's disinterested in you. And she's just looking for some other guy to give her attention to make her feel better about herself. Uh, I'll show him. I'll show Brad that I can still get guys. And here's Eddie, you know, sort of thing. Don't even waste your time. Um, she's not interested in you. She's, she's never going to be interested in you. She's, she's, she's alpha widowed. She has a place in her heart for another man. Okay. If a woman has a place in her heart for another guy, that's impossible. It's impossible. You just like they'll they'll sometimes pretend over time you know especially when more time passes especially if they have a need for a guy like you know she's a single mom like they're not usually looking for love they're looking for help right she might hold that little you know that place in her heart for you and she'll warmly welcome your money and your resources and your protection and your home and you know access to all your shit and your network and your, and your influence and all that sort of stuff but if she's still holding a place you're never going to get her best you're her second third choice you know whatever that happens to be Never be, never be anything less than her first choice. You want a good experience with women? Never be anything less than her first choice. Lighting a cigarette in my truck without asking first. Yeah, it's just disrespectful. Any any disrespect from a chick, cut it off. Especially early, early on. You will get disrespect from a chick that you're dealing with on a long-term basis. Okay? It's inevitable. It will happen at some point. To what degree? Okay, fine. You know, deal with that later. But if it's happening early on, or if she's unnecessarily disrespectful to like the wait staff or rude unnecessarily, uh, cut her off. You know, she's going to be a fucking nightmare, a handful to deal with. Yeah. So this guy said her over here how she treats others, right? Um, Use pictures from prior years when she was much thinner. That's just catfishing. Smoking already had a kid and was an alcoholic. Just super low value women. Um, so there's a whole bunch here, purple hair, extreme bipolar disorder. Uh, I went to pick her up. She was, wasn't ready. So she changed right in front of me. That's weird. Um, 
making up things I don't know about, the conversation, tattoos, that's on my list, red flag, being busy with her phone, standard stuff. You know, we've talked about this already, too much alcohol, covered it. I'm kind of a witch. Okay, here's here's another one that's a little bit newer to some guys out there. There are women out there that are into the occult and weird, like, witchy shit. They exist. Probably freaks, you know, great in the bedroom and all that stuff. But is that, like, like do you want a witch for a girlfriend? You know, you want the mother of your kids to be a freaking witch? Like, is that your plan? Think about it. Daddy issues, daddy issues. She wanted me to co-sign for a new BMW. <laughs> You're a sugar daddy if she's asking you for that. Adam's apple. Uh, yeah, that's dude. That's a dude. Show up the first date pregnant. Oh, man. Imagine that. Showing up to a first date pregnant. Surprise. Got Chad's kid. Not Chad's. Tyrone's. Whatever it happens to be. Surprise. I uh, do like if that uh, I've never personally experienced that, but if I was meeting a chick on a date and she showed up pregnant, I, I wouldn't even say anything. I just turn, I, I would just dodge. I'd be like, oh shit, that's her and she's pregnant. Get the fuck it. Go out the back room. Negative IQ, lack of insight, assuming that I'm going to pay on the first date. Guys, you should be paying on the first date. Okay. I know there's this, you know, woke narrative about going Dutch and, and sharing. And when you're younger, maybe, okay. You got a job. She's got a job. I did a video on this on the Entrepreneurs and Cars channel, maybe. But if you're a more seasoned guy, you're more mature, you've gone somewhere in your life, you know, you're at, you're at or past your sexual market peak because you've made some money, pay for the date, right? Don't take her out for a $500 fucking dinner. Dates, and I'm going to say this again, one hour, it's a sniff test. You want to make sure she's not pregnant. She doesn't have borderline personality disorder. Uh, she doesn't have dirty nails. She doesn't have hairy armpits. It's a sniff test, right? You're busy. You got shit to do. It's a drink. It's a coffee. It's something simple. It's not a long commitment. What's the big deal paying, you know, 20, 50 bucks, you know, for a drink or two or whatever it is that you happen to be doing somewhere in that realm? Not a big deal. I mean, if she shows up with hairy armpits and dirty nails or pregnant or something like that, don't even do the date. Just 180, turn around and head in that direction. Done. Problem solved. She took out a phone. She took a phone call and yelled and cussed at her 14 year old daughter. Single mom. Just don't invite them into your life. I mean, have fun. Like I said, indulge, but don't invite them in your life. I think we've got a lot here. Yeah. If you see any, any soundbite, like if you can't handle me at my worst, then you don't deserve me at my best or some shit like that. That's a psycho. Uh, they're, that's that's boss girl psycho energy narcissist there's like somewhere in that spectrum she's damaged goods she's got baggage you know if you can't handle me at my worst and you don't deserve me at my best you know how much baggage a chick like that has how many guys i don't know they hurt her they got in a fight got physical cheated on like there's always some bullshit fuck it's if you can't handle me at my worst you don't deserve me at my best go away Okay, I think that's enough of the uh, Twitter. So let's do what we got here on uh, the Facebooks, maybe for like another 15 minutes. Or sorry, this is uh, the community tab of YouTube. Uh, and then I'll switch over and we'll take some call-ins. I see there's a few guys waiting here for some calls, so we'll get to that in a second. Now, in this one, I just said, what is the worst flag that you've seen when first dating? I didn't make it gender specific, so that was open to everybody. So I wanted to see what people would say. Are we going to get the gals to chime in or what would happen? Anyway, turned up high and drunk on our first date, then proceeded to shout and curse the staff at the bar, quit an experience. I left. Yeah, it's just, uh, look. guys, uh, you know, I'm going to be completely honest with you. When I started the Ladies Night Project, and if you're not watching that podcast series, it's on Wednesday nights at 8 p.m., I had higher hopes for the caliber and the quality of women that we would be able to invite onto the show as guests. Um, we're not looking for difficult women. Like Moff does all the recruiting. Uh, you know, we've had conversa conversations. We're not looking, like we're looking for what you're going to see out there, right? Granted, from time to time, you know, you'll see all a couple of OnlyFans uh, girls on, but it's, it's rare now. Like uh, the last show was the last one that we did it. And to be honest with you, that Jasmine character was a colossal waste of time. Just a 
fucking train wreck. Um, it's not a good um, sample size. But the sample size that we've seen from the months of the other shows, the caliber and quality of women out there that you have available to you, they're not good. You know, I've said this many times, you're going to dig through a lot of dirt before you find gold when it comes to dating. Um, spin plates, date them simultaneously in a non-monogamous fashion. Uh, let the cream rise to the top. Let her come to you and say, hey, Rich, where do we stand? I dig your vibe. I don't want to share you. I want to claim you. I'm not seeing anybody else. Other guys are invisible to me. You know what I've been talking about, this sort of stuff. Then that's when you can, at that point, make a decision. You can evaluate her against the red flags. Again, if you want to see them all, they're below on the email list. You're going to evaluate her against the red flags. And if it's low to none, then you can make a decision at that time and say, look, you know, I dig your vibe too. But let's say, for example, she's posting thirst traps on social media. Not all the time, but sometimes enough that it's a problem. But I can't take a gal seriously that posts, you know, sexy provocative pictures on social media. You're not using it for business. Uh, you're only using it to get attention and likes and, uh, you know, comments from guys. So can you knock it off? Cause then I might be able to take you seriously sort of thing, right? That's how you handle, you know, situations like that, but you're going to dig through a lot of dirt before you find something that looks like gold. And you know, like a woman like that might say, well, get fucked. I'm not going to do that. Okay. You made this very simple for me. Bye. Right. I've got other options. You know, we'll see how those pan out sort of thing. Uh, or she may say, you know what? You're absolutely right woman in a serious relationship with a guy that she adores and loves. And of course, you know, you know, you're looking at it from your perspective. Yes, she has genuine burning desire for me and all that sort of stuff. She'll, she'll delete her social media. She'll shut it off. If she admires, adores, and loves you, she will trust me. I know. Um, let's see what else we got here. Yeah. So here's another one, massive lack of accountability, personal accountability. I used to do this. Um, you know, from time to time, if I was on a date with a chick and she was all my ex, the, the, the government, the, you know, my employer, my boss, everybody's an asshole. Everybody does them wrong. My parents, my, you know, my sister, doesn't matter what it happens to be. It's everybody else's fault, but hers. I would just look at her in the eye and be like, cool. So what role did you play in this? Like, how could you have made that better? How could you have avoided that situation? Right? Like basically asking them, well, what's your role in this equation? What did you do to contribute to this shit show, right? Like, where's the accountability? Uh, if she doesn't take accountability, again, it's not long-term relationship material. It's very simple, guys. This is why I say date a bunch of women simultaneously in a non-monogamous fashion. The cream will rise to the top and the stuff that's not the will just fall down, right? The plates will fall down and smash. Do whatever you want with that, right? When she tells you she's not fully over her ex, that's alpha widowed. Again, that's in my red flag list. Um, they don't always jump back to them, given the chance. If he comes back, they may. Um, usually when a chick's alpha widowed, it's it's because she couldn't secure him, so he walked on her. So they they generally don't want anything to do with him, which speaks volumes. Like, why would like if she's such a great chick, if she's selling herself to you, like, I'm such a great catch, and da 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 da. If this guy walked away from her, then why? I would even ask that question. So, I mean, she's already telling you that, you know, she's alpha widowed at that point. So why not play along? Don't explain what an alpha widow is or that you've recognized that trait in her. That doesn't do anything. It's a waste of your time. Don't try to red pill women or any of that shit. That's what dorks do. But, oh, so why did he leave you if you're so great? <laughs> and then just sit there and I, <laughs> wait for her to answer, right? We talked about daddy issues. Uh, victim is another one that's on my red flag list. You know, women that are always uh, unhappy, unluck unhappy or unlucky. They have a victim mindset about everything. Um, frustrated because of work. I don't talk to my parents very often. Yeah, a lot of these we've already covered. I was chatting up a young lady at a party and she informed me she was intimidating to men. Her parents were both dead. Her son is a result of a rape 10 years earlier. True story. She's intimidating to men. That's a boss girl. That's a chick that wants to compete with you. Like intimidating how? There, look, unless you're dating a chick that's the same, like I'm 6'2". Like unless I'm dating a chick that's six foot two of fucking Amazon, 
which I don't because I'm not attracted to fucking Sasquatches. I want to date women that are feminine and in, you know, like in feminine stature, right? I don't want a chick that weighs 200 pounds. You can't pick them up. Why would she be intimidating to us as men? I mean, to me anyway, that's, that's just how I roll. But why would a chick tell me? I mean, I can't imagine a chick sitting up across me from a date five, between five, five and five, eight, nine or something like that and going, well, I intimidate men. How exactly? I've seen legitimately scary fucking dudes. I've never been intimidated, but like even an MMA fighter like Ronda Rousey, she would not intimidate me. I'd be like, I mean, most average guys of, of you know, height and weight could probably <laughs> intimidate me. Come on, let's, let's move on from that. While I appreciate her honesty, she flat out told me that she's high maintenance and believed that if a man did not spoil her financially, that she would consider him cheap. How about get fucked? Yeah. I will spend my money and time and attention on you as I see fit. You don't get to tell me what I have to do. That's a that's an immediate get fucked. Why? Because you have other options. Because you generally have better options than that. High maintenance. All that high maintenance means is that she's a bitch, generally speaking. Is that she's going to be difficult. She's going to nag you. She's going to chat. She's going to criticize you. Just don't admitted that she cheated on her husband with a virtual bum, a valet at a hospital that was 10 years younger, a liar, alcoholic friend. I was an idiot. She was a pump and ghost, but I fell for her BS. I cheated on my husband. Make me your wife. Okay. It took place where I lived in Alaska. I got back into dating, went to a nice late afternoon coffee date, Homegirl didn't work. I was cool with it. First half of the date goes well, very respectful and well put together. We see the northern lights are out and decide to go for a cool spot to take a light show. This is a little story. I didn't have a four-wheel drive vehicle at the time. It was nice. It was snowing, so we hop on her brand. So we hopped in her brand new SUV. Nice. We get to the outskirts of town and she starts hysterically crying and breaking this character she was in. It was some real life stuff from movie split. <laughs> Turns out she was schizophrenic and planning to kill me because my appearance looked like the guy that hurt her as a child. Holy smokes. I mean, generally speaking, you want to be in control of the situation and the date because you don't know what you're dealing with. Like you could be dealing with some legit crazy chick. I'll tell you a story in a second. Um, yeah, like you want to be in your own vehicle I even go to the extent, like, if I sit in a restaurant, I usually sit where I can see the entrance. Like, this is something that I learned in Krav Maga, right? Like, you want situational awareness. You sit where your back's up against the wall. You're looking at the, you know, the entrances and the exits sort of thing. You just know what's going on, right? It's from my motorcycle days. I talk about in the book why it's a good idea for men to own a motorcycle and, you know, detail all the reasons for that. And it's one of the things that I learned while, you know, being a motorcyclist, you have to keep your head on a swivel. You have to know what's around. You have to have situational awareness. Um, I would have probably sniffed out crazy before I got anywhere near her vehicle. Um, but if you're going to plan to go anywhere, you should be driving. That's just my take on it. Oh, that story. Yeah, let me t share that story and then we'll get to the call and Q&As in a second. So let's pull this out here. Speaking of crazy. Had this date once with this... Um, with this gal, she was hot, kind of a fitness gal. You know, that, that's that's what I'm attracted to, like a fitness girl, right? Uh, curves, pretty, um, you know, in shape, but not muscular, not like dude looking, like like a bikini model type of look. So she ticked off the, those boxes. Blah, blah, blah. We're talking, you know, standard sort of stuff that I would do around the time. Grab a coffee, go for a stroll, you know, open park somewhere, lots of sunlight, lots of air, lots of people around. She's comfortable. You go sit down somewhere, you're chatting. She goes, have you ever been in the back of a police car? And I'm thinking to myself, that's an interesting question. I've never been asked that. And I, th and I go, wait, have you ever been in the back of a police car? I'm wondering why she's asking me the question. And then this is when she starts singing like a canary. Well, there was the one time when I was trying to talk to my boyfriend and he locked me out of the house and I picked up a log that was stacked at the side of the house that he would use for firewood and I threw it through the front window and I ended up in the back of the police car and I spent a few hours in jail. I'm like, okay. 
Yeah. Like, ask questions, guys. Women will sing like a canary if you ask them questions. They love talking. Give them the opportunity. Give them the soapbox, the stage, and hear what they're all about. Because that, again, that's what your that's what your date is about. It's a sniff test. You want to see what she's made of. You want to see what she's about. Is this a chick that I want to spend you know more than one date with? Because the whole problem with like the Mano Swamp and the PUA culture and all this bullshit, they're like, get the same day, lay. It's like, sure. But if you're a guy with options and you have abundance, you've got a phone which also has options in it. And if you're single and you're dating non-monogamously, if you want to get laid, it's pretty easy. Okay, so the whole like push for the same date lay, you could invite a nutter into your freaking house. You could end up going to, back to her house and wake up in a bathtub with ice around you missing a kidney. So take it for what it's it's worth. Okay, that being said, we'll get into the uh, ad reel and we'll take some call-ins for the Q&A. Uh, it's pinned at the top of the live chat in YouTube. So, you know, head over there and uh, do the thing. Uh, let me run the ad reel. And again, guys, if you want to get the full red flag chapter, uh, it's available. Just hop, opt in my email list. There's lots of useful stuff in the email list. Um, I only ever send out useful stuff, guys. Get on the email list, get the free chapter, or better yet, get the book, get the second edition. Um, this is the second. It's it's kind of difficult to tell because it says only second edition in this yellow bar. But make sure if you're getting the book, if you want the most updated one, get the second edition because it's quite a bit more dense than the original version. The top one's a second edition. It's got an extra 40 pages. It's got field reports from my editor um, updating on his experiences You know, with the stuff in the book. We also cleaned up a lot of it. We tried to uh, make it more palatable as well too so it doesn't ruffle the feathers of people that get offended by certain language and words without watering down the message. The message is still strong and deliberate and clean. Uh, and the holidays are coming up. So also, if you don't know, this is the Spanish version, by the way. El Alfa Liberido, translated properly. Um, it's The hardback is available in Spanish and in English as well. And the audio version is coming soon. But this makes an excellent gift for the holidays. You know a guy that needs to uh, read that, grab him a copy. All right, let's uh, run the ad reel and we'll be back in like a minute and a half. This episode is brought to you by the Unplugged Alpha Supplements and Grondike Soap Company. Brothers, if you're like me and you take what you put in your body seriously, you'll want to use the Unplugged Alpha Supplements. An obsession with absorption is what sets this line apart from the others. You want to make sure that you absorb as much of the supplements as possible so you don't end up peeing out expensive urine. My supplement line is made in the United States from the highest quality domestic ingredients. And unlike cheaper supplements from China in plastic bottles, mine ship in dark glass bottles to keep your supplements fresher, longer, and won't seep endocrine disrupting plastics into your supplements. Nothing is a hard tablet. Everything is in an easily digestible, bioavailable capsule. You can filter all products by various categories, including testosterone support, estrogen metabolism, fat burning, immune health, sleep support, and performance. Visit theunpluggedalpha.com forward slash shop and use the subscribe and save option to get 10% off your supplement orders or use coupon code alpha10 for 10% off a one-time order to try it out. Then I use tactical soap and God of War beard oil every day. Tactical soap is a handmade product made in the United States from ingredients you can actually pronounce, not conventional endocrine lowering toiletry chemicals. Both the soap and the beard oils are infused with bioidentical pheromones that are designed by a clinical psychologist and pheromone expert to maximize attractiveness to the opposite sex. Go visit coopersoap.com and get 10% off your order today. Guys, check out my website at richcooper.ca for more information on booking me for coaching, my community, my courses, and a whole bunch more. You can also find all the useful links pinned below in the top YouTube comment of all my videos. Now let's get on with the show. All right, so let's do the Q&A segment. Again, guys, these are always happening in almost all the shows. So if you have questions, this is where you get to them. Uh, if you need private consults, you can get that from my website. Just go to richcooper.ca and you can book me privately. Uh, I think Mighty Stallion's been waiting uh, for a while here, so let's give him a shout here. What is up? Morning, Rich. I can't hear you. Do you have... Hello, can you hear you me? muted? Yeah, just turn up your volume or maybe speak up a bit for me. Uh, hello? Can you hear me? Yep. 
Barely, dude. Yeah, you, no. It's it sounds like you got something covering your mic. Do you have your thumb covering the mic or is the mic not on? How about now? No, I can't hear you. I'm gonna come back to you in a second, see if you can fix that, okay? Uh let's give Tom a shout here. Tom, what's up, buddy? Hey, how's it going, Rich? Good man, what do you got going on? Uh my question is so I've been uh dating my girlfriend for about a year now. And the past few weeks, she's been bringing up moving in together and getting married and stuff quite a bit. And yeah. I, I've been married before. I told her, like, yeah, I don't really see the point in marriage. I don't really want to do it, at least not at this point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing about moving in. She's got, like, a lot of pets. Mm -hmm. And I told her the same thing about that. Like, I don't really see How the point pets? in doing it. Uh, she's got a big dog. She's got a chihuahua. She's got three cats. And she's got a bunch of fish. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's a lot. Bring all that shit in your house. Yeah, and like the big dog, she's very, like, very attached to. Basically, treats him like a child. Throws birthday parties for him and stuff. How old are you, and so, how old is she? I'm 27. She's 20. Okay, and uh, like, what's the plan? Like, what's the dating strategy for you? Uh, I'd like to keep things going. Um, I'd like to keep living in my own house for the time being. Um, she's a pretty cool chick. Like, all things considered, like. She started doing my laundry, doing my dishes, making my bed and all that stuff without me even bringing it up. Nice. Yeah, it was, it was very nice. Very agreeable. Yeah. And a lot of the same hobbies can pretty much go anywhere and have fun doing almost anything. So. Okay, good. Yeah, she's a good chick. Okay, so what's the bad part aside from all the pets? Uh, I mean, the pets are really the main thing. But a little hesitant about doing all that stuff again after being married and divorced and going through that. Yeah. It wasn't a horrible divorce by any means, but like, still, I look at my bank account and imagine half of that being there and I'd get a little uh, yeah. displeased, you know? Did you see the video that I did on the Entrepreneurs and Cars channel? Um, reasons why it's not ideal to live with a woman that you love? Uh, I think I saw something in that effect. It was, it was stuff that you started dealing with once you move in with a, with a girlfriend. It might have been yeah. something similar to that. Yeah, I put it out in the last month. You should watch the whole thing because it's because it's comprehensive. It covers it all. Yeah. Um, look, like unless you're planning on having kids together, and I'm kind of a I'm split on this, right? Because some guys would be like, yeah. "Yeah, live with her if you want to have have a family and uh, children," or you can just provide for two two households and have her raise the kids in the other household. Okay. Yeah. Um, there's guys that do that and they do that very successfully and it keeps them focused and, you know, like on their purpose and mission. Are kids in the picture for you? Uh, she's interested in them someday and so am I. She's still got quite a while before she's got to worry about running out of eggs. So, yeah. She's like, if things keep going, I'm not too worried about that. I guess. What's her money what situation would, like? Her money situation? Yeah. Uh, I mean, she can afford a small apartment on her own and be just fine. Like me, I can. Do you I live can in an apartment, or she live with her parents? Uh, she she just moved into her own place. She used to live with her mom, but yeah, mm -hmm. now now she's at her own place. Yeah, look, I mean, the like one of the ways that you can handle that conversation, is, like stuff, doesn't usually get better when you move in together, right? Like, right. That's that's a societal norm. That's like a standard convention that a lot of people sort of believe like, Hey, you know, you're dating, she's good. You know, she's taking care of me. She's making my bed and, you know, cleaning up after herself. And yeah. she's generally a good girl, except for the fucking zoo that lives in her house. <laughs> um, but, um, what ends up happening when you live together is things start to change. You're no longer yeah. romantic. You're no longer doing lovey dovey stuff. The enthusiastic sex starts to slow down and decline less often one of the arguments that you can make is hey look you know take a look around at people that are married and live together and or live together and you tell me how many of them are still enthusiastic for one right. another to this day there's a oh. study that i that i covered in my book and it was the effect of uh long-term relationships on love and the participants in the study there was like i think it was 8.1 years or something like that uh, the amount of participants that reported still being in love with another with one another was less than 13 percent the amount of wow. participants that reported still being in a state of bliss for one another was less than two percent so the probability of things going into perpetuity well as they are right now are going to decline you're going to have fights oh your fucking dog did this in the house and it chewed up my this and it shit over there and you know like it's trying to sleep in the bed does she sleep with the pets 
Yeah, and like she's brought her pets over here a couple of times, and like the Chihuahua, like if you leave him unsupervised for like two minutes, he shits in the corner in the same spot, and you just can't get him to stop doing it. It's like, yeah. And I told her, it's like I really don't want that dog here, and she stopped bringing him over. Yeah, I mean, she might get to the point where she gets rid of the pets and say, "Okay, I got rid of the yeah. pets now, Tom," and that would be a strong indication that she's in your frame and has genuine burning desire for you. But still, I mean, if you're not planning on having children anytime soon, why ruin what's working? Right. You know what I mean? Like handle it from the perspective of this is my space. That's your space, right? Stay on your side. I'll stay on my side. You know, yeah. without saying that basically, but it's like, you know, like you love your pets. I wouldn't yeah. ask you to get rid of your, like, if you want to handle it from that angle, just like, I don't want you to get rid of your pets, but I don't want can them I, in my house. So enjoy them in I, your house. Can I ask how you how you would approach dealing with that as it comes up uh, periodically? I'm getting ring yeah, out somewhere. Yeah, yeah, I, I canceled it. Uh, Sorry. How would you deal with that conversation coming up periodically? Like if if only happens like a few times a year mm -hmm. after that's been established, how would you how would you bring it up? What the moving together? Yeah. By just posing the same question, like women can't respond to this. I've I've never had a like a good response. It's like okay, so show me an example of a couple out there that has it all figured out, that's living together, that's still in love and, and doing well, still banging enthusiastically, like long into the relationship. They still care for one another. They don't fight. Show me because I want to know what the secret sauce is. Let's go and study them, and then we'll apply it to our relationship. Right. That's a good that's point. A, that's a very simple way to sort of like, this is my space. That's your space. Let's get together, do our shit. Um, a guy I once knew said, um, you know, and he was divorced and he said something along the lines of, I want to be married again. I want to sit down, have dinner, hold her hand, drink a glass of wine, sit by the fireplace, uh, have enthusiastic, fantastic sex. But then I also want to walk home to my house. <laughs> right. Um, yes, I think I see what you're saying, man. Yeah. So look, look. I, I mean, can you make it work? Sure. It seems like about 13% of people have figured it out. Do I know anybody that I can like rip off and duplicate that from? No, there's nobody that I can study and say, okay, well, what's the secret sauce to make that work? Plus you also have the added problem of a zoo, right? Like she's got five right. or six animals and fish or what, like she likes that, which is fine, you know, but if you're going to have kids, just get rid of the animals. Like that's too much shit. And yeah. she can put the effort. Yeah, her place smells like a cat box too. Yeah. Like she wants to nurture animal, like something, you know, which is fine. Like that's a nurturing type of woman and personality. Like save that for when it's time for the kids. Let the animals, you know, run their course. You know, they live for five, 10 years, you know, whatever ends up happening, happening, you know, sort of thing. But once they start going and if you're seeing plus you've only known her for a year or two right yeah i wasn't planning you, on moving in this soon either way usually but. usually you want to wait a year and a half two years to see what they're made of because women can act for like the first year year and a half right and my well, ex-wife did well <laughs> you, you see what i'm saying right like you're going to deal yeah. with a representative right so as soon yeah. as you say i do and she has a key to your place and she moves in or, you know, whatever that happens to look like, that's often when the representative leaves and then you're left with a real person. And then you're going to like, she's going to shit on you because your cabinetry is not organized properly in your pantry. And she wants this over here and that over there and this over here. And it's like, why can't you organize it the way that I've set it up? And all of a sudden now you're not fucking that night, right? It's like, you're yeah. going to have all kinds of these things pop up. If you just keep your life simple and stay in your own quarters, you can still have a great experience with her, right? And yeah. you don't have any need to come together because you're not going to raise children. So why, why fuck something up that's working? Yeah. That's just my take on it. Look, other guys will say other things. They'll say Rich is wrong. Don't listen to that guy who hurt him. Look, my life's pretty good, man. I got a great experience, you know, with my LTR. We don't live together. Uh, I'm not saying that I won't ever in the future. It's just this is the way that things roll right now, and it and it works out real well. And I've been doing it for a few years. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. I think you uh, give me some good advice to go forward with. You got it, man. All right. Have a good one. Take care. See you. All right. Let's give uh, the Mighty Sally another shout. See if he's working okay. You got your audio on, bud? Hello? Yeah, there you go. Now it's working. Rich, can you hear me? Yeah. What do you got for me? Uh, I have uh, one question for you. 
the issue I'm facing is that I'm in uh, I'm from Pakistan, mm-hmm. and uh, the thing is, uh, there's not many guys uh, that I can connect with. Uh, like, uh, you know, you have your uh, community. I talked to Moff, and he told me that there are no there are no uh, men from Pakistan in your community. Yeah. So I want to connect with the men who are strong and uh, you know going after the things they want in life. Uh, what the problem live? I'm facing is that I'm uh, finding it very difficult to connect with other men. Where do you live? Pakistan. Oh, okay. well, yeah. I mean, that's a problem, right? Like, connect yeah. with men from Pakistan, right? Um, the community is mostly North American based, although we have you know guys from around the world. Uh, but you're not going to get much benefit from it from Pakistan, right? Um, fine. I mean, I've read guys. your book. I've, I read any book that uh, you recommend. I've read yeah. almost all of them. Fine. But, fine. Uh, that's about fine all guys the that, that you can link up with and form a brotherhood with, right? You know, I've said this many times. Some of the best places that you can go to do that is um, a fight gym, you know, a dojo, take up martial arts, kickboxing, boxing, you know, whatever it happens I've to be. I've made that a you few like. friends in the gym. Yeah, that yeah. is true. But, Weight lift. Uh, most of the men that I meet at the gym are also quite plugged in. So, uh, okay. so you don't have to, you know, hang out with them and form a brotherhood with them, but. Get to know them, you know, ask around, meet different people. Like, dude, the vast majority of the population is plugged in. Like the like the vast majority of the population is just sleepwalking through life, happy wife, happy life, all that, all that stuff. You know, that's what you're gonna get. It's the same thing everywhere in the world, right? But I mean, if you want to make in real life connections, definitely if you're in North America, there's loads of people throughout um, you know, that you're gonna get some value from. But um, yeah, with where you're at, you're just going to have to do it locally and sort of build your own brotherhood and tribe there. What What would be your advice on uh, moving out? Because uh, I don't see the West as a good option to move long term. Argentina is looking pretty good right now after they got that new president, huh? <laughs> Did you guys hear about the new president they got in Argentina? He's he's like a libertarian hardcore dude. He's he's. Anyway, it's a long story and too much to explain. But um, look, the States isn't as bad as you think it is if you have a good tribe of men around you. You still there, bud? Yeah. The States isn't as bad as you think it is if you have a good tribe of men surrounding you. There's certain places in the U.S. which are still pretty decent, although it is going woke. It is going more, you know, purple hair, uh, rainbows, pronouns and all that sort of stuff. Um, You just don't associate or bring those people into your inner circle. Let them do their thing, you do your thing, and you build and form your tribe and you roll with it. So build the same sort of thing where you're at in Pakistan, right? I want to leave a legacy. I want to have children. Can you hear me? Yeah. How old are you? I'm 35. Are you a multimillionaire? I've done pretty well in Pakistan. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I lived well. I've built good muscle. I yeah. am... Uh, fairly good masculine guy are you worth seven or eight figures sorry are you worth seven or eight figures i mean in pakistan if you compare it with the if you compare it within pakistan i do pretty well well what's pretty well i mean in pakistan if you make like 30 50 million rupees I don't know what that is in U.S. dollars. So, do you like? Are you in the top ten percent of income earners there? Yes. Yes. Okay. So you should have options, right? Like network with other guys that are in the top ten percent of income earners. Do you work for a company or are you self-employed? I work in uh, like an. uh, I work in the bureaucracy, the elite bureaucracy of the government. Oh, so you're a government guy. Yeah. So. Find guys that live in the because I mean you can't leave. Like I was gonna say, somebody said in the comments, just go to uh, Dubai or another country. But um, if you're sort of handcuffed to the country, you're you're just gonna have to network and find guys that get it. I have a friend of mine that lives in uh, Sofia in Europe. Uh, he's in he's a bureaucrat, kind of like you, 
uh, yeah. very red pill, very unplugged, you know, sort of guy, alpha as hell. Um, most people around him are plugged in beta males, but he has, he has a good network, right? It's just, you have to lean into it and find ways to make it work for you. It just takes time. You know, it just takes time. It takes work. You know what it looks like yeah. now, now that you've done the work, you've read the books, stuff is starting to make sense to you. Like, you know, you see the code in the matrix, as I like to say, only, you know, hang out with and invest in people that are like-minded that you can form a brotherhood with. Anybody that doesn't see things the way that you see it and is on the outside, on the outer perimeter, that's fine. You know, you can have lunch with them. You can do business with them. You can, you know, have dealings with them. But I wouldn't want them on my team when the shit hits the fan. It gets pretty lonely when you're... Dude, Pakistan has a lot of people that are living in it. I'm sure you can find some guys that are at the same level as you. They cool. must exist. They should come right. out of the woodwork. Well, you have to invite them out of the woodwork. Go to places where strong masculine men hang out. Again, fight clubs, gyms, stuff like that. Masculine pursuit, shooting guns, fast cars, fast boats, jets, like cool shit. Like that's where you find successful rich guys that also don't put up with shit. Thanks, Rich. All right, man. See you, bud. All right. <clears throat> We got a few more guys uh, waiting to come in. Let's grab. Um, we got Andy here. Let's see what Andy's got for us. Andy, how you doing, bud? Rich, what's going on, my brother? Good. What do you got for me tonight? Good. Uh, first question: When is the second book going to be available on Audible? The second edition is uh, going to be out probably before the end of the year, like maybe December the latest. Okay. Just I've been checking for it the last few days and I haven't found it yet. So yeah, it's been recorded. My editor's just doing the final touches. So as soon as like if you're on my email list, then I'll notify you there first, but I'll mention it on videos once it's available too. Uh number two, I love how you handled that OnlyFans prawn star last <laughs> week on the ladies' night show. I you hung in there a lot longer than I could with that because the entire time I'm like, Rich, dump her, dump her, get her out of here. She's yeah. terrible. Horrible yeah. attitude. Well, I, I I mean, there's a reason why I didn't throw her off earlier on because I want it like, you know, you give somebody enough rope, they're going to hang themselves. So I just like, I know how to deal with these lawyer boss babe chicks. Trust me. Like I was married to one. So it's like, but she was extreme. She was, she was to the extreme. Oh, I just let her gosh, run her mouth. Bro, she was so annoying. I know. I let her run her mouth. I let her talk. I let people see her for what she was. Like I let them see the code in the matrix, you know, as I like to say. And then I just had enough of her at the end. Like she just wouldn't shut up and she was cutting me off. She said, fuck it, you're out. I'm driving down the highway listening to it. Like, would you shut up for once in your life? Um, I haven't talked to you in a little while. I wanted to follow up on something from the summer. You were on Danica's show and yeah. it was amazing. I was doing yard work, listening to the show that day. And Danica was like, Rich, don't you want somebody to challenge you in a relationship? And I'm sitting there like, no, literally, I said it. I'm like, no, Danica, that's not what we want. Mm -hmm. We grind hard all day. We fight wars all day. We don't want to come home and have you fight with us. Yeah. And then going into my next, my last thing, I do a lot of field research. I've got a lot of chicks that are around me all the time. The discussion comes up, you know, they're like, why don't guys want to settle down these days? Blah, blah, blah. And I tell them, and it's the same thing. It's like the ask hole thing mm -hmm. that people come to you with. You tell them what the answer is and they don't want to hear it because you're not yeah. telling them what they want to hear. Yeah. So I tell these ladies, I'm like, look, we want agreeable, kind, submissive, knows how to cook delicious, nutritious meals. Um, and just don't be so damn unpleasant to be around all day. Their response is always, you just want a servant. You want someone to come home and, and just yeah. cook your meals and Bye. be a servant. It's not... No, it's called it's called a good woman, lady, right? Like that's what a good woman does, right? I, like, you know, I mentioned earlier, like I'm on the special diet for two weeks. My girlfriend's coming over tomorrow, and she's taking care of my meal planning for the next few days because I'm starting to run out of food, right? I don't, I don't like. There's no fight. I don't need to, you know, argue about it. It's like, hey, babe, I'm running out of some of the stuff. She's like, okay, cool. You know, uh, we're gonna need this, this, and this. Uh, thaw out some turkey, uh, thaw out this sort of stuff, and I'll take care of it for you, right? And she'll make something legit, tasty, nutritious that fits my requirements that I'm working on. That's a good chick, right? 
and I take care yeah. of her, you know? So they're not everywhere out there. Like you'll notice, you know, the sample of women that I've had on the ladies night show, it's like most of them suck. They're not good for yeah. anything <laughs> more than just maybe fun at the most, but you know, to spend time on a long-term basis with, or like to take a vacation with, I couldn't imagine like the vast majority of women that I've had on that show, like taking a vacation with them for two weeks. They drive me freaking mental. No, it, it would never happen. Just unpleasant, oh, disagreeable, argumentative all the time. Don't listen. No. I'd I'm rather good. suck start a shotgun than have to deal with Jenna right. or whatever her name right. was. Um, they're just they're they're terrible. They're horrible. And the last but thing they don't I even say know it though, chicks. because there's so many guys just giving them all this attention all the time. Okay. Culture's well, reinforcing, be a boss girl, you know, chase, you know, you you can do whatever a man can do, girl. You know, you can probably do it better. They've been here. Like they've been hearing this their entire life. Why would they believe anything different when a guy like you or me comes along and says, you know, we kind of want like a soft, agreeable, pretty girl that's, you know, willing to pre prepare a nice, tasty meal for us, right? It's not complicated. The women that get it, they get it and they, and they find the guys and they, you know, they're able to settle down and they're able to form a nice bond and a connection. They still exist yeah. out there. It's just like I said earlier, you're going to dig through a lot of dirt before you find gold. But hey, you know what? The upshot of it all is you get some experience, you get some cool stories, you know, there's stuff that you can share with your boys is what yep. it is. It, it, I tell the last thing I'm going to say is I tell every single one of them, that's fine. You keep that attitude. But until such time when you change, then you're going to have your dogs, your cats, your box wine collection and your that's eat, it. pray, love, grateful, blessed signs on the wall. And you can sit there and just think about it yep. and be a single mother. Yeah. It, look, man, it's that simple. It is what it is. Don't make your problems my problems. You know, like I like to say. You got it. Thanks, Rich. All right, Andy. See you, bud. Bye. All Be right. good, pal. Let's give it to uh, Chris. See what he's got for us here. Chris, what's up, buddy? Hey, Rich. How's it going, man? Thanks good for bringing man. me on, brother. Um, it's not a question. Was more like some commentary about the uh, the red flag. This is what I've noticed. Um, sure. You know, we talk a lot about like that, not trying to red pill anybody, which yeah. I've stop doing well and don't I, try to red pill women or plugged in beta males yeah yeah and so what i started doing is like indirectly trying to wake people up using the red flags mm. and so what i've noticed is i'll go through some of the lists and the wheels will start turning and i'm like oh yeah i've noticed like either in past relationships friends co-workers families uh relatives yeah. and they're like yeah you know so and so had some of these things and they were kind of fucked up whatever there or they were you know not a good person to date whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I've noticed is I not, I'm not necessarily trying to wake people up, but just starting to recognize some things for them to be aware of, or they can reflect back yeah, on some of those red flags. And so what I find a little kind of funny to my, to myself is when we're out hanging out, they'll start to name out the red flags to me. Like, Hey, Chris, this six got this, this, and this. And it's, you know, it, I, I took a little bit, but it's, it's like they're learning just indirectly. Now they're and ready so for just, the book. Now they're ready for the book. Christmas is coming. Grab them a copy. Hey, potentially, man. So that's actually not a bad idea. I might get a, a couple copies uh, now that yeah. you mentioned that. But yeah, that was just some commentary. That's what I've noticed and some things that, you know, might help somebody out. That's maybe needs a little bit of guidance indirectly. That's just yeah. been my experience on it. And that's just a, some comments that I had for you. So what's yeah, you got to warm them up to it. You can't, it's like asking a toddler to run, right? It's got to learn how to stand on its feet and sort of walk, stabilize himself. Then that's when you get to the running part sort of stuff. So it's, yeah. you know. It takes a while. Like it took me a few decades. Trust me. Yeah, it takes, it takes some time, man. It takes some time for sure. All right, man. All right, have a good one. Thanks. All right, uh, let's give it to Rob here. Let's see what we got. Rob, what's going on, buddy? Hey, Rich. How are you? Good, man. What's crack locking? Good. Good to see you again. Good. I, I'm going to dive right into it just because it's on the topic here. Um, sure. Red flags. I'll get a chance this week to um, share a little bit of my um, one itis story with you guys. Uh, coming out of my divorce, um, got super tied up into a um, massive red flag situation. She um, smoking hot. Um, we had instant chemistry. It was an online dating meetup kind of deal. Mm -hmm. um, but then I find out, um, which wasn't a problem. It was actually super exciting. Found out she was actually a professional dominatrix in, in Toronto. <laughs> and so she introduced me to a... a, a a lot of excitement and a world of uh, a, a crazy opportunity. But the, the interesting thing is instantly the red flag started appearing. 
uh, right away. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm literally going to read some notes because like mm -hmm. she had so many uh, daddy issues. Like, I mean, no wonder it's a number one. Well, I'll stop you there for a sec sure. before you get into the list. But yeah, any chick that dresses up in attire, puts on a costume yep. and wants to lead and run the show 100%. and be a dominatrix. Yeah, she's she's always gonna have red flags. But go ahead. So what 100%. were the red flags? No, for sure. And the crazy thing about it's that fun, is it's fun, right? Like it's you know, fun. you can have your fun. 100%. You know, you do all the fun, like kinky shit with her. Whatever. And you know what? You get caught up in it because you know they have. She literally has. She has tens of thousands of followers that are probably like DMing her nonstop all day long. Yeah. Beta simping and just going crazy for her, and she wants to be dominated in a, in her own world. Blah blah blah, etc. So yeah, for mm -hmm. sure, you get caught up in it. Um, the daddy issues came forward. Um, she was, he was absent, uh, mentally abusive to her, emotionally abusive. It's funny. You just mentioned in tonight's show, she literally kind of advertised herself as like an Amazonian woman. She was like five ten, five eleven, mm -hmm. like something around there, like 180, 190 pounds. So yeah, I mean, 185. I, I'm I'm six two, like 180. So she was she was right Dude, up. That's beside a Sasquatch me. for a chick. It's a Sasquatch, <laughs> like you just called it. Um, you just bought anyways. a Bigfoot home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you you said it. Yeah, amazing in the yeah. bedroom, right? Crazy, blah blah blah. Won't yeah. you do anything? Um, but anyways, claimed also her father was a narcissist. Um, find out later on during that whole ridiculous one night situation that she had PM. PMDD, premenstrual uh, syndrome. Anybody can look it up. I had no idea what this was. What's PMDD, that? you can look it up. It's, so it's like it's a. Um, so basically, it's a. It, it, revolves, it revolves around the woman's cycle, um, and where most women, obviously, during that kind of cycle, menstruation period, become a little bit more. I don't know, lack of a better term. Oh, okay. Um, emotional, bitchy, whatever yeah, you want to yeah. call it, but that that happens to a. a it's just a extreme much, PMS extreme pms yeah okay now early on doctors another reason like, why it's not yeah, advantageous to live with a chick right i get mean you know uh doctors actually ended up uh diagnosing that as a bipolar disorder so bpd um before they actually fully started to understand it mm -hmm. um so much emotional dysregulation next on she was like extreme feminist like she's a pro-dom so yeah. she was like basically like you know men need to serve me and men need to worship me etc yeah. <laughs> red flag number five keeping a, an insane amount of like men from her past around like her exes her previous clients her submissives that were part of it all mm -hmm. meanwhile part of it all like, like we had a great relation during the time you know like kind of fell in love like this all this craziness met her family all this stuff going on i don't want to just paint it as strictly like what are you doing with this woman but it's just interesting because like um you know, there was moments of times where I was just caught up and like, okay, she has a lot to offer. She's showing me lots of love and support and she's doing a lot of things to support me and all this mm -hmm. stuff. But um, man, the red flags just kept going, right? Um, keeping all these men from her past around. Uh, she was also heavily involved in the um, party scene, like raves, fetish events in the GT area. Tattoos. Um, yeah. Uh, so endless possibilities of encounters, you know, when we'd be together, her phone would always be turned down mm -hmm. so that we wouldn't be able to hear it going off or see anything going. So coming question quick. for you though, did you sure. take her seriously though when you met her? Uh, at first, no, but okay. honestly, um, we, we were you I like, were you ahead. plugged in then or did you? Yeah, I was plugged in rich. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because part of that is just like, you know what, as, as we developed, um, you know, I hate to be, I hate to sound this way and I definitely look at it differently now, but, um, uh, you know, coming out of a 19 year marriage at the time going through the divorce, uh, like, uh, like there was something like, I felt like a real obviously connection with her. I felt like, uh, uh, like we had something kind of thing. And I know a lot of people have said that and I don't want to like, you know, go on about that, but, um, it had me kind of, she had me in her grasp, so to speak. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, well, she knows how to control, right? That's, she knows how to control. That's what dominatrix do. They run. Manipulation is unbelievable, right? Like, they uh, know how to run, guys. They, right. ridiculous. Uh, single mother, had two children. The two children were yeah, a dude, you can stop. Nightmare. Yeah, you can stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> I just like, wanted to share. <laughs> I mean, I knew as soon it's as awesome. you said, you know, dominatrix, that she was going to be a bit of a train wreck. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, <laughs> I mean, the feminist is tied into it. Like when you get women that want to dominate like that, 
it's tied into women that want to compete with you. It's tied into feminism. It's like, it's tied into all those things. So it's like the dominatrix part is just a consequence of those prior choices mm -hmm. and part of her DNA, you know, like part mm -hmm. of her programming. So it's like, cool. You know, there's guys that like that. There's guys that want to roll with that. Let them, right? It's just now you know what she's made of. You know, you had your fun. If you ever come across it again, you'll know how to deal with it. Um, but it's not somebody that you want to take seriously. It's not somebody that you want to invite to your family, bring them over or any of those things. It's just, you know, that's yeah, it. Yeah, I, I, I would never invite that into my life again right now. Um, uh, like I'm actually seeing an amazing woman right now. Um, Good. That, yeah, um, complete different contrast. And no social media presence. Grew up farm life in Ontario, blah, blah, blah. Like just a yeah. phenomenal uh take care of her man kind of woman so like i said you know they're out there but they're few and far between so few and far between i'm very Good. fortunate dude all right rob thanks awesome. man See thanks, you, Rich. all right let's do one more real quick i got five minutes uh let's give it to rod rod what do you got for me bud hey rich can you hear me fine yep you got five minutes so so quick question oh man i have so many questions i'll try to make it simple then um so I have a serious case of one-itis, um, really, really sad and depressed and okay. having a hard time to get over it. I saw the writing on the wall, um, mm -hmm. dated for a one and a half year Broadway actress um, and got dumped after it. So I wish I had more time to tell how it got through that, but uh, plugged in. I was was married, relate a lot to your to our story. Uh, got divorced, went through the divorced grinder. Was Wait, you married shade. this girl that you got the one itis for? No, 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 no. This I was married. Uh, yeah, and got divorced, and then all my friends went to her side. I was in, living in the. I, I'm living in the U.S. and didn't know the culture, didn't have any friends. Mm -hmm. So what saved me was going back to the gym. I was mm -hmm. out of shape, so got really in good shape and started to date again, and then got involved with with a second chick, which is related to another guy that was relating to. Which one did uh, you pets. have one itis for? This is the one after the marriage. No, that that was uh, the the third one. That was after this pet okay. mom. Where do you live? So just I live in the U.S. right now. I'm in Brazil. Uh, spent some some time with my dad. That's really sick. So. Okay. Seems like and, and where in the US did you live when you were dating this uh chick so, you got the one I just for? Um she lives in New York. I, I live in Seattle. Um I work I'm a rocket man. I, I work in a rocket company. Um for wait, Ed, sorry. We got... She lives in New York, but you lived on the other side of the country? Yeah, yeah. So it was crazy. So you had a long she distance a... relationship. Yeah. So first well, that's red a big flag. No, no. I I've talked a... about that yeah, before. Yeah. So Have you seen my videos on long distance relationships? I did. I read your book okay. and from the start, I told her she was there. She did a show. We got together because of an app and I told her I don't do long distance. And right from the start, I read on the app she was bisexual. She mm -hmm. was okay with um, ethical, no monogamous, no E&M, ethical, yeah. no monogamous. And yeah, she I wants said, to go and bang okay, other this, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I, I said this so, would be a. So a why did you take thing. her seriously if you know she's all about that sort of lifestyle? At first, I didn't. It's like Rob was saying. I I, I decided to indulge, and right. I had a casual thing, and then she went back to New York. But man, she was gorgeous. She was feminine, and I never was treated like that. She was burnt. She was, she had really burning desire for me. Yeah. Um, after she went to New York, I said, okay, that's the, it. The chick's she got said, genuine burning desire for you. She doesn't want to go and fuck other guys. No. And like other guys what, are legit invisible to her. Exactly. And she went back to New York. I said, that's it. She said, no, we ha I like you. We had a good thing. Um, let's keep talking. I said, no, I, I've been there before. I don't want. One week, one week after, she bought a flight ticket to see yeah. me in Seattle. She came, she asked me, can I see you? I'm going to Florida. And I decided to do a layover in, in Seattle. Can I see you? I said, yeah. man, okay. Never had that. She went, she was gorgeous. Uh -huh. Banged my, my bones off throughout the week. Um, yeah. I really, I, 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 I was indulging. I said, okay, I won't take her seriously. But like really, really slowly, she was, I, I was getting into her. And after that, she said, okay, come see me in New York. I never been to New York before. Um, I'll get 
I was I never went to see a show in Broadway. I'll get you a a ticket to see a show with me mm -hmm. in Broadway. I went and then How long did you date her for? One and a half year. One and a half year. And when was and, the last time you saw her? Uh we ended this three months ago and never never talked to her anymore. But man, it's been okay. really, really hard because Yeah, no, I can tell. No, I can tell in your voice. Um yeah, and I mean, so about three months ago was the last time you talked to her. So why did you guys break up? Like what like what was the reason? I wish I could talk more, but I decided to put boundaries. There was so many things, so many built up. Like she would do shows like volunteer shows where she would uh strip for money it's like broadway bears a lot of uh -huh. actors go there and strip and said yeah. i don't like that i don't want that but it's for a good cause i don't care how and old are you rod i'm 45 and how old was she and, uh she was 42 but she she's 42, really good and she's and she's still behaving like this look man you're, you're like love can look like crazy Right. Like yeah. a lot of people mistake crazy for love and the way you're describing the run up, like the crazy elements of, of it, guys get caught up on that. You have some great sex. She love bombs you. I love you so much and all that kind of bullshit. And then you're like, all of a sudden she's saying this, you're getting the experience, but then she goes and does something else. Like she's stripping for other men or she wants to go and sleep with other men because she wants to be ethically non-monogamous. Right. And that's what crazy looks like, right? It's like say one thing and then do something completely, totally different out of character, right? Mm -hmm. Holding you, I love you, I want to be with you, you know, we're gonna make something out of this. And then, you know, like next weekend she's in another city but and I, she's stripping for I a bunch know of she dudes. didn't see any other guys. I I do know she didn't because I tried to sure. I, I ended with her three times. Every time I, I finished, she brought she bought a flight ticket and come sure. to see me and bang my so again, crazy, <laughs> crazy can look like love. Like you don't want to confuse it. Yeah. You have to believe the actions, right? If, mm -hmm. if you set a boundary and you say, look, I can't take a girl seriously. That's going to be taken off her clothes and stripping for other guys. Then a girl that's got genuine burning desire that doesn't have any kind of issues or mental issues or BPD or anything like this. She'd be like, yeah, you know what? You're right. Because I value this relationship and, and you're that important to me that I can stop doing that. Exactly, exactly. Right. And and didn't end there. What ended is that one day she decided to go for a dinner with a single friend with her. And then yeah. she sent me pictures. Oh, there is a dance festival and I'm dance, dancing with guys. I said, no, I don't want that. Yeah. yeah. I don't so want to look, be in the environment. Yeah, look, dude. What? I mean, if a chick's not going to follow your lead, she's not going to enter your frame. She's going to like... A good relationship is going to be easy. It's not supposed to be hard. You're not supposed to be fighting over stupid shit. She's not going to be, you know, stepping out of bounds and doing things that compromise your love. Okay. She's going to follow your lead, right? She's going to basically follow the um, boundaries that you set. You know, I can't, and, and that's my I question can't be taking a girl you. serious. The only reason why you took her seriously though, Rod, is because you don't, because you didn't have better options. Right. Exactly. If you I mean, had better options, if you had more abundance, you would have looked at it and been like, that looks like crazy. I might spend some time with it and have some fun, but that's crazy. I'm not going to get attached. I'm not going to invite it in my so, life. I've got these options over here. Yeah, that, that that's part of what happened. I, I, I try not to take her serious. I was trying, I, I was dating other girls too, but no yeah. to to as good as her you know dude and there's there's that, there's that, four that billion women on the planet you can't tell me that there's not something better than this hoe a Man, 42 year old hoe that's stripping for that guys i disagree with you that won't I, follow I, your I'm lead I, I i'm in seattle it's a walk city it's depressing most of so i think this is the question i want to ask you because from your shows then the ladies night it's horrible and I never dated a girl that was feminine. Uh, she really took good care of me. She would cook me meals. She she would. Can you buy get me. out of Seattle and go work for another company? Can you work for Elon Musk and do SpaceX? I don't think he's based Man, in I'm, Seattle. Exactly. I'm thinking of that. I, there, there's. I, I have an option to the current company I'm working. They have office in LA. I'm thinking yeah. of going there. I mean, LA is better than stuff. Seattle, but not by much. Like you want to get yeah, to a state expensive. that's like more Texas, Tennessee, mm -hmm. Florida. Yeah. Like, I mean, you know, I, try to find a red state. See if you can get into like a red state. It, where's uh, where's that SpaceX based? Texas, LA. isn't it? Texas, but mainly LA. So yeah, what see, I realized. Yeah, see if you can get that, your ass down to Texas, man. Uh, 
What I want is a big center where there's arts, entertainment. These are what I realized where women that take good care of their body and no, are no, healthy. No, 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 no. I'm going to stop you there. Look, arts, entertainment chicks, they're all, f they're, sorry, they're mostly all like you've just described. They're usually very attractive because they move and they dance and they take care of themselves sort of thing. But they've been with a lot of dudes. They're constantly out partying and dancing. Like, look, when they're out dancing and they're doing these shows, they're advertising themselves. These 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 artsy, attractive dancing Broadway show kind of like, look, I've dated a few of them. I know exactly what you're dealing with. Yes, they're hot. Yes, they're great in the bedroom, blah, 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 and all that sort of stuff. But they're not long-term relationship material. Like you're not going to be able to invite them to your life. You're not going to have a good relationship with them. They are going to be a pain in your ass. They're going to step out of the bounds. You can't control me. They're all feminists. They're all. Yeah, they are. It's not if they're a feminist, it's to what degree they're a feminist. And if you look at my red flag list, there's at least three red flags on that list that almost every Broadway, you know, dancer, uh, artsy sort of chick is going to violate. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, like get comfortable. Like there's lots of very feminine, attractive women with a nice figure that don't do that stuff that are, that are just in the self care for the optics of, I want to be healthy and I want to have a nice looking body for my guy, not for 15,000 guys, right? Like they do exist out there. Um, I but I mean, if so you want to lean into the artsy depressed. cities and the gals, like you're going to be dealing with that more and more. You have to understand Rod, there's, there's 4 billion women on the earth. It's incredibly arrogant to think for a minute that she's the only one that can ever exist for you. There's loads and loads and loads of other way better women out there. I guarantee you in five years time, you're going to look back on this and be like, what the fuck was I thinking? Man, I hope so. Because you I'm will. getting old. I'm not getting any younger. Uh, age plays a role. And for the sample that you see on your shows for ladies night, man, most women that are really attractive and, and, I don't want to lower my standards because I take care of myself. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I want someone that is beautiful. Well, and, there's, well, there's yeah. lots of beautiful women that I've seen on that show that are an absolute train wreck. Like we've had some hot women yeah. on that show and they're just like, there was at least two or three that just broke down into tears and like, like yeah. sobbing, crying on the and, show. And that's why I get so depressed because damage. it seems like I, I emotional don't damage. Yeah. That's, that's what you're going to deal with. And it's like, cool, man. That's, that's what it is. I see it now. I'm going to keep it at arm's length and I'm not going to fall for her bullshit. And you're not fully unplugged yet, Rod. Like I'll, I'll be honest with you. No woman today will ever have control over me. When you're fully unplugged, you'll never have one itis again because you see relationships, you see women, you see these dynamics for what they truly are, right? They say that you can love women or you can understand them, but it's very, very difficult to do both. Yeah. I've figured out how to do both, right? They will never have control over me ever again. You need to get to that place where you have an understanding and you create an agreement with yourself that you don't allow yourself to get to that place ever again because you keep difficult, bratty, like women yeah. that are red flags, like a walking Chinese communist parade. Like you keep them out of your life. You don't, you don't fall for their bullshit. No, I agree with you, man. And I'm really trying hard. It's not, only been, not it's only been three months, Rod. I guarantee you within like, there's an old saying that, you know, somebody told this to me when I had one itis years ago. They said, you know, if you date a girl for like three years or something like that, it's probably going to take you three years to like totally forget about her. Right. Mm -hmm. So you dated yeah. this chick for a year and a half. You got another, you know, like year and change before you're totally going to forget about her, but you will forget about her. It's just a matter That's of time. Awesome. Focus on you, focus mm -hmm. on your hobbies, focus on building a good network. If Seattle is not for you, you don't like, you know, like the wokeness, you don't like the city, then move to another city, man. Like, as far as we know, dude, this is the only life we get. Maybe there's a bonus yeah, we, round when we die. Who knows? Yeah, but as yeah. far as we know, when we're walking this earth, this is what we get. So don't waste it living your life for some bullshit company, you know, lining their pockets with gold, working on problems that you may not totally care about. Because the thing that you care about right now that's holding you back is some you random back. hoe in New York that takes off her clothes for other men. That's Thanks, what man. she is. Yeah. See her for what she is, understand her for what she is, take her off the pedestal, knock her down and move on with your life and live it for yourself.
Do you understand? Thanks, man. I, I, I've been really thinking of moving. Uh, I love the company I work with. Uh, I'm really putting a dent in the universe, literally. Yeah. I love space exploration. Um, but yeah, uh, there's, I was thinking. Really there's other options out there now. There's other options out there now. It doesn't have to be yeah. Seattle for you. Yeah. Thank you, man. Appreciate All right, it. brother. Thanks. All right. Rob, or sorry, Rod, watch that again and again until it, you know, sort of sinks in. Um, we went a bit over today. A uh, couple other things I have to announce also, you know, before we sort of wrap up and go to the podcast outro. Um, we're not going to do the ladies night show this Wednesday because it's American Thanksgiving and Moff's traveling and it's hard to get the girls lined up because they're traveling for family and stuff. So we're just going to skip it this week. Um, I may do a solo show sort of like recapping. I may not. I don't know. I haven't decided yet. But um, so Wednesday and Thursday, they probably won't be a show. Uh, but we'll be back next week with shows on Monday and Wednesday and Thursday. Moff does his Moffis hours on uh, Thursday. So uh, enjoy, you know, the rest of your week or Thanksgiving. I hope you guys got some value out of this. Throw some comments below. Do all the YouTube stuff that helps with the algorithms. And uh, we'll peace out on the uh, outro. Thanks for checking out tonight. All right, guys. If you enjoyed that podcast, make sure you visit my website at richcooper.ca to learn more about my courses, my book, The Unplugged Alpha, community, or booking me for private coaching. Also, if you are a Canadian with $15,000 or more of credit card debt and what you are doing right now isn't paying off the balances, then visit totaldebtfreedom.ca and hit get a free quote to see if you qualify to settle your credit card debt for less than you owe today over the next 48 months. Make sure you check out the top pinned comments